Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. You will find on earth no truer friend than the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk to you about the friendship of the Holy Spirit. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship. So let's worship now. The Holy Spirit is a friend like no other. And learning about the friendship of the Holy Spirit is what absolutely revolutionized my walk with the Lord. And I'll never forget when I was a teenager, the Lord spoke to me. I've called you to introduce my Holy Spirit to your generation. I find joy in that mandate because I find joy in introducing people to my friend, the Holy Spirit. And he wants to be a friend to you too. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, we see a very powerful truth. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Think about what the scripture is saying here. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. This means... I commune with him. I spend time with him. I have conversation with him. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is one of the many benefits of being a child of God. 
You, believer, are a friend of the Holy Spirit. You, believer, have access to that same fellowship with Him so that He might go with you wherever you go, that He might empower you in whatever you do that is right. Now, what I want to do right now is show you in the Scripture what the Bible teaches concerning true friendship. I think this is something that the world has forgotten. What is true friendship? How does that look? I'll show you what the Bible says about true friendship, and then I want to show you how the Holy Spirit embodies those truths and how He is, in fact, a friend above all friends, a friend truly like no other. But before we even do that, I want to first establish this very basic truth, that the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, when I say the Holy Spirit is a person, I don't mean to say that the Holy Spirit is a human being or that He's not an equal with the Father and the Son. I simply mean that the Holy Spirit is a personal being. We know the the Holy Spirit is a personal being because, number one, He has a voice. Acts chapter 8, verse 29 says, The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. The Holy Spirit, number two, has a will. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The Holy Spirit has feelings. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 says, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing, that you will be saved on the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit has a voice, so it's possible that He can be heard. The Holy Spirit has a will, so it's possible that He can be obeyed. The Holy Spirit has feelings, so it's possible that He can rejoice over our actions. The Holy Spirit is a personal being. The Holy Spirit is a person. And therefore, we can share in a friendship with Him. Now, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26, the godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. So trait number one, the Holy Spirit gives the best advice. Think of that friend who always gives you the good things that you need to hear. Not always something that you want to hear, but they give you the best advice. They give you the best wisdom. When navigating those difficult circumstances in life, it's good to have a godly friend who can help bring some perspective to what you're facing. But think about the fact that the Holy Spirit, as your personal friend, gives you advice. You have access to that divine mind giving you advice as you move through life. For John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 says, A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24 says, There are friends, and that's in quotations there, there are friends, so-called, who destroy each other. But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6 says, Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? We see here that true friends are fiercely loyal. Now, this is something the world doesn't understand. The world doesn't understand that loyalty. The world teaches things like this. Well, you know, that's life. Sometimes you just lose friends. A true friend is never lost. A true friend invests in the friendship, even if there is some distance created. A true friend will stay committed to that friendship, even though circumstances and living situations might change. True friends are lifelong. True friends understand investing time and resources and effort. They understand that it's not just about hanging out and having fun when it's convenient but they understand that they must be there for their friend continually, faithfully, in the good times and the bad times, when life changes circumstances and when things become difficult. 
In John chapter 14, verses 15 through 16, the scripture says, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He abides. In fact, he dwells in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. So the Holy Spirit dwells in me. He's near to me constantly, and He doesn't leave me. Many believers are under the impression that when they make some sinful mistake or when they choose some foolish action, that the Holy Spirit is just going to lift from them because He was so deeply offended by what they did. That's not the Holy Spirit. It would make no sense for God to remove the Holy Spirit who is your only chance at being holy, as a punishment for not being holy enough. No, the Holy Spirit abides with you. The Holy Spirit remains, even when you make mistakes, to help you overcome those mistakes. The Holy Spirit's with you in the difficult seasons, when your heart is heavy and you feel you have no one to turn to, when you feel alone and isolated and like no one understands. The Holy Spirit is with you. He abides, a fiercely loyal friend. So trait number two, he is fiercely loyal. For trait number three, I want to pull a truth from Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 to 6. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. In other words, people who aren't truly your friend will flatter you and lie to you when you're in the wrong. I think it's a mistake that we always choose to stand behind what our friends do. You shouldn't stand behind everything your friends do. You shouldn't agree with everything that they say. You shouldn't support their every decision. Now, some would say, isn't that what a true friend does? Actually, according to the scripture, sometimes a true friend will wound you. Sometimes a true friend will get in your face and bring forth correction when you need to hear it. They'll tell you when you're being too moody. They'll tell you when you're being too negative. They'll tell you when you're being too selfish. They'll tell you when you're acting foolish. They'll tell you when you've done something you shouldn't have done. And they will get in your face about these things because they love you. People who don't really care about you, they're just going to agree. Why? Because they want you to like them. And out of that selfish need to be liked, they fail to tell you what you need to hear. This is true of friendships. This is also true of marriages. I've seen husbands back wives and wives back husbands when they shouldn't. One of the spouses will type something on Facebook because someone angered them. And instead of telling them, you know, you shouldn't have posted that, that wasn't very kind, or maybe you are in the wrong, they'll say, that's right, I'm going to stand with you, and they'll never bring correction to each other. But something a true friend does that shallow friends will never do is bring correction to you when you're out of line. And it doesn't feel good when it's happening, but that correction is out of love. The Holy Spirit is gentle like a dove, yes, but he is also very direct. Trait number three, he corrects you even when it hurts. John chapter 16, verses seven through eight say this, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you And when he comes, watch this now, when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Those are three things. So in other words, not just of sin, what you're doing wrong, but of righteousness, something you can aspire to. He doesn't just convict you about what you shouldn't do. He convicts you about what you should do. And then he convicts you in regards to the motive and the coming judgment. What's my motive? that I would please God. So he convicts you about what you shouldn't do. He convicts you about what you should do. And he convicts you regarding your motive, regarding your heart. And this is that higher standard he calls us to by bringing that conviction. I thank God that I have the Holy Spirit with me. I can't tell you how many times I was about to open my mouth to say something foolish or mean or untimely. And the Holy Spirit stops me. And he tells me to hold my tongue. And in those split seconds that he basically safeguards me, 
in those split seconds, he changes the whole day. What could have gone in the wrong direction, the Holy Spirit keeps on the right track. Why? Because he corrects you even when it hurts. He'll talk to you about that secret sin. He'll talk to you about that addiction. He'll talk to you about how you treat your physical body and whether or not you're living a healthy lifestyle. He'll talk to you about how you're handling your marriage, how you're dealing with your children, how you're acting in your church, how you're talking about your pastor. He will convict you. He will deal with those issues you don't want dealt with. Why? Because he's a true friend. So, he corrects you even when it hurts. Trait number four, we glean from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Trait number four, he partners with you in life. He also partners with you in the work of the ministry. We are partnered with the Holy Spirit. We get better return on our labor when we do things with Him. How many times do we try to do ministry without the Holy Spirit, without realizing it that we're trying to do it without Him? Many times we go ahead, we charge ahead, and we do things without ever consulting Him. We do things without ever considering Him, and because of it, we only get so much return. But when you partner with the Holy Spirit in what you're doing, when you partner with the Holy Spirit in your ministry, in your business, in your life, in your relationships, you produce more fruit from that. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, but you will receive power. When? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We see here in Acts 1 8 that the Holy Spirit partnered with the early church to spread the gospel. He provides the power. He's just looking for a vessel. He provides the power. He's just looking for a vessel. I tell the Holy Spirit all the time, if you don't show up, I have nothing to give the people. You know, before the services start, the miracle services that we do around the world, I'm usually in the back room, just praying, pacing, thinking, going over my notes. And the whole time I'm thinking, if I step out there and the Holy Spirit doesn't do what He does, all of this was for nothing. Traveling away from my family, the team setting up the sound and the cameras and the lights, the people waiting in line hours before the service starts, sometimes out in the cold or out in the heat, the people who volunteered to help our ministry, the ushers who organized everything, all of it. The worship team who practiced, all of it was for nothing if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up. But He does show up because He's a true friend. He goes with us. He partners with us to bring a higher return on our labor. Everything you do that is good or productive or that could bring forth good fruit can be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we'll pull one more trait, trait number five from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. So just the very next verse. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit never falls. The Holy Spirit never falters. We're never going to have to pick him up. But he will pick us up. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27 say this. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. That's in our weakness. In our weakness, He helps us. He pleads for us according to God's will. He pulls us into harmony with the flow of the river of God's will. When we're weak, He strengthens us. When we're lacking, He provides. When we don't know what to say, He gives us the words. He fills in the empty spaces. Trait number five, He helps you when you fall down, when you feel weak, when you're lacking in strength or spiritual vitality, when you feel the passions and that fire for the Lord beginning to weaken. And life has a way of doing that to you. 
Some people say, well, that never happens to me. Well, they need to go through some things then. And though the Lord can fan the flames in trials, you will feel it in your emotions. You will feel it in your body. You will sense it in your mind, the weakness of human nature. Otherwise, why do we need the Holy Spirit if we never get weak? There is weakness, but the Holy Spirit gives strength and He helps us when we're faltering. So, trait number one, He gives the best advice. Trait number two, He is fiercely loyal. Trait number three, He corrects you even when it hurts. Trait number four, He partners with you in the work of the ministry. And trait number five, He helps you when you fall. He truly is a friend above all friends. Let's thank Him now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being such a wonderful friend to us. And we pray, Lord, for the wisdom, the strength, and the power to be a wonderful friend to you. We want to be friends of the Holy Spirit. Father, help us to do it. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. I want you to say that and say, I am a friend of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you want to join our online church, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now to your comments. These comments come from Gifts of the Holy Spirit Service Gifts. Do you know that some people have spiritual gifts that they don't even realize are spiritual gifts? That the power of the Holy Spirit is hidden in the seemingly mundane day-to-day -day acts that they choose? If you want to know how the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be operating in your life without you even realizing it, I highly recommend you go and watch this particular teaching, Gifts of the Holy Spirit, Service Gifts. It's actually a part of an entire series that I did on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That whole series is available now. While you're looking for that teaching, and again, it's a gifts of the Holy Spirit, service gifts, make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. Click that notification bell when you do so that you can be notified when new content becomes available. So here are the comments from that teaching. And by the way, if you leave a comment in the comment section right now, I may read your comment on one of the future episodes of Spirit Church. So let's take a look at what the people said. Linny Lin says, thank you for taking such a significant amount of time to take us through this teaching. Such clarity, you are such a gift. Grateful also for everyone serving behind the scenes. Your video content is very clear and well done. You can see a touch of excellence and that you're not just putting something out there. Jay Jericha writes, what a lesson. This was an excellent teaching on Spirit Church. Thank you, Brother David, for yet another anointed message. Those who listen to you and implement the teaching will definitely grow. I do not want to miss any editions of your teaching. I am enjoying each and every week of your anointed messages. Many thanks, my brother. May God add more to you and the rest of the Spirit Church team. Majori Valencia writes, Dear ETV team, Every time you post a new video, it gets better and better. The quality of the editing, the worship songs, and especially the teachings. Praise God for your channel. May more souls be one for the kingdom of God. God bless you and love you all with the love of Jesus. Hey, I want to read one more portion of scripture to you. It's found in Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse number 6. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating... A woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Here we see a woman who was thankful that her sins were forgiven. Here we see a woman who was lavishing her love on the Lord. 
That perfume she poured over him, by the way, was worth about a year's wage. In other words, a whole year of working, that's what she poured out on Jesus. I think sometimes we forget that giving is an act of worship. I'm going to ask you something. If Jesus was standing before you in physical form, or if you knew he was going to visit you in physical form in your home, how would you prepare? Many of us would go and clean the house. We would want to prepare the best meal. We would wear our best clothes. We would want to honor his presence in that home. I think many of us would also bring a gift. We would bring him a gift just to say thank you. Now let me ask you, if Jesus was standing before you in physical form and asking for your help with resources that his message of truth might go around the world, what would you put in his hand? Would you just do what was easy and say, okay, Lord, be on your way? Or would you do your absolute best because you love him? He's been faithful to us. He's been patient with us. He's been such a good friend. Let's bless the Lord in our giving. You know, when you give to ministries who are doing His work, it's like you're putting it into the very hands of Jesus. Not to get, not in response because you feel guilty, but simply because you say, Lord, I love you, and I want to lavish my love on you. So I challenge you today, give to Jesus. Don't hold back from Him. He's never held back from you. Give today that souls might be saved, that believers might be encouraged, that the Word of God might spread around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Support the events, support the media, support the live streams, support the online school, and support the ministry in general so that we might continue to tell the world that Jesus saves. Give a one-time gift today or become a monthly supporter by going to David Hernandez Ministries. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly partner, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. And I want to challenge many of you to become a $10, $30, or $100 a month partner today. And you can see more information about that at davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. It comes with wonderful benefits, but the greatest benefit is knowing that you're supporting the gospel and that you're lavishing the Lord with your gift. So whatever you do today, one time or monthly, do your best because it's for Jesus. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.